Sometimes it looks like a mixed martial arts melee. Sometimes it seems to be a parade ground version of WrestleMania. Other times it looks like a good old fashioned street brawl. Welcome to the All Army Combatives Tournament, held every fall at Fort Benning, Georgia. These are the heavyweights. He was a tough guy, you know. Uh, it took me a little while to get control of the fight, uh, find out what he was trying to do. Obviously, he was trying to punch me in the face. So, got on top, got control, you know, did what I do. What Sergeant Brandon Sales does, as the old sports cliche goes, crush the opposition. In this case, Staff Sergeant Benzel Vereen from Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The tournament has its share of cheap thrills for the crowd, not to mention the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. But even the toughest fought bouts end with gestures of sportsmanship. Here, it is about winning and losing. And Fort Riley, Kansas won the 2008 team championship. But beneath the competitive intensity lies the life and death purpose of Army combatives. People don't realize that, you know, we only do it because it's fun and it's great for morale and, you know, it's great competition, but it saves lives over there, you know, every day. All right, get ready, go! Saving lives over there starts in basic training. That's where new soldiers are first introduced to combatives. The elemental moves are called level one. The people who come in the army, they're, they're just citizens. So how do we take the average citizen and inculcate them with that warrior ethos? The training has to be rough and harsh. Basic training is also where competitions begin. The rules are much more restricted in this company tournament than in the all army. At level one, combatives most closely resembles conventional wrestling, guys grappling on the ground. It does get the adrenaline pumping. You have to imagine what it means to be a warrior. It really comes down to this. The defining characteristic of a warrior is the willingness to close with the enemy. No matter how squared away someone is, what kind of skills they have, if they're not willing to go through that door where they think the bad guys are, they're not a warrior. Simultaneously kicking at the foot. This is level three training, and this is a normal day. Every day is, is different as far as techniques and progression goes, but th this is what we do every day. We train soldiers in fighting techniques that we can apply to the battlefield. Level three is taught in a four-week course at the U.S. Army Combative School at Fort Benning, Georgia. For the first time, soldiers are allowed to fight standing up, although the primary strategy is to take your opponent to the ground. Students are also training to be trainers. From here, I'm going to roll to into him. A level three certification will permit them to go back to their home units and run battalion level combatives programs. The full range of combatives incorporates techniques from multiple martial arts, among other combat styles. You have your basic wrestling, you have your basic boxing, kickboxing, sanshao, we do judo, we do kempo, we do jujitsu, we do basic stick fighting. The training is rigorous, with new moves and variations introduced every day. Some exercises are unarmed. Some include weapons, including sticks, rifles, and electrified knives. Even if you're not going hand-to-hand -hand with the combat, it's the mental and physical tools that you gain from it. You learn not to panic in tough situations, you learn how to handle yourself and focus in tough situations, and you learn how to get out of them. Students can miss no more than two hours of class time, so learning how to fight also means getting used to functioning with assorted bumps, bruises, scrapes, and worse. I've dislocated a couple fingers, it busted up, bruised, black eyes, everything. It's, it's level three, is, level three is serious, serious. Got put into a submission hold, uh, tried to work myself out of it, and elbow popped. I got my nose broken uh, last Friday. I, they told me to duck, and I decided to eat it instead, so it was my fault, but it, yeah. I'm known for my kickboxing, so they told me when I got out there, they wanted me to uh, show my kicks, I guess, and I kick somebody in the elbow and I fracture my foot in two places. It's actually really hard because it's hard to walk, it's hard to push off of and stuff like that, but that's just the way we train, you know. Got to do what you got to do, and I don't want to start all over, so. There's always medical support on site, and careful safety precautions are in place. So the assorted injuries are no more than the inevitable side effect of the training. This isn't a tough man contest. It, it's physically and mentally strenuous. 
But the whole point is to increase instructors and combatives in the Army. Ongoing combatives training is now routine throughout the Army, and it's for everybody. Here at Fort Benning, a weekly combatives workout is part of the battalion officer's PT schedule. They drill under the watchful guidance of the instructors. In another quadrant, brigade officers work out. What the modern combatives program does is it provides continuous training. It really sets the stage and teaches training methodologies and teaches people how to integrate it within their unit so that the training will continue. Some level three students will be getting to put their certifications to immediate use. I'm doing this training specifically for going to uh, train coalition forces in uh, Afghanistan. And to get level three certified so I can get back and uh, train my guys up, uh, we're getting ready for deployment. I'm going to end up taking a lot of this knowledge to my unit 162nd Fort Polk and, and uh, initially be the, the first uh, level one instructor for my unit. Combatives can be adapted to a whole range of missions and situations. Airman Joshua Keel is a SEER specialist, SEER standing for survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. He trains Air Force flight crews what to do if they ever get shot down or ditched, including the use of combatives. If they actually get confronted by the enemy or if they find themselves captured in a hostage situation nowadays, they might have to take it into their own hands to be able to overpower their enemy, and that's kind of what this whole MACP level means to me for the air crew members that find themselves in the worst possible scenario. Staff Sergeant Vern Grilliard is an MP at Fort Stewart, Georgia. We just can't run into somewhere and shoot somebody, so we have to look at the lowest level of uh, use of force that we can use, i.e. putting our hands on the subject and wrestling, to them, wrestling them to the ground, whether it be one-on-one -on -one at a uh, domestic violence scene or whether it's two-on-one -on -one if I have backup. And you just throw some punches. Okay. There. Sergeant Anisha Randall is now a drill instructor at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. For a lot of people that come in the Army that don't know anything about their ability to be fierce and go out there and handle themselves, I think this is great for that. The few times I was employed, I worked with local nationals and I didn't feel as comfortable, you know, by myself. Yes, I did have my M16, but what if a situation came up to where I couldn't, you know, use my M16 or I ran out of rounds or whatever the situation is, I always want to be able to take care of myself. Keep drilling, guys. Talk yourself through it. Got to be able to go up there and teach it. The level three course teaches some soldiers they weren't as advanced as they thought. No, you kept the ankle. I showed up thinking I was at 90% and I realized that I was probably more around 25. So I, I think I've come up to maybe 50%, but with the, with the strong base that they've given me, I'll be able to, to bring myself up higher and higher and maybe one day get to as good as I thought I was. The final exam for level three students, three bouts with and against various combinations of weapons, starting with a Filipino fighting stick. The cadre gives the test a big buildup to both hype interest and anxiety amongst the students. One review. Just getting over that um, initial getting hit with a stick, but it, it is a total culmination of the whole course of all we learned from stand up, uh, boxing, kickboxing, takedowns, it's just that total bring it all together for something at the end. Some of the fighting is quite fierce, but the instructors never let any of the bouts go too far. Sergeant First Class Maurice Tucker is the elder statesman of this student body. Yes, what is this? It's a good class, very good class. I remember um, with level two, I walked out of that thing. Wow. A bit of confidence, and this is even greater, so it was very rewarding. The students agree. There's great value in combatives training, both militarily and personally. It's been challenging. You get bumps and bruises, you know, but, you know, it's fun. I mean, you get, you'd have to pay a lot of money in the civilian world to get the same kind of training, so we're getting it for free, so definitely take advantage of it while we can. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad, I'm glad it's over, <laughs> but I'm glad I did it. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Joe Shusko is hosting a demonstration of Marine Corps martial arts 
for the families of young officers about to graduate from their basic course at Quantico, Virginia. Please do not try this with your siblings at home, okay? The demonstrators are instructors at the Martial Arts Center of Excellence at Marine Corps Base Quantico. They got good enough to do this by passing this, the Martial Arts Instructor Trainer course. It's not just martial arts. We realize that we're not walking to war now. Pretty much we're getting dropped off by helicopters or Humvees or something, and so we have to have the power and endurance to hop over these walls, kick in these doors. So we're doing a lot of combat conditioning with the physical techniques also. That's one major difference between the way the Army and Marines train their martial arts instructors. At the end of this run, a little PT. All to warm up for this. It's called the Last of the Mohicans, a run through another woods where instructors are lurking, acting as enemy soldiers. What? This is a kind of lesson for students in what they don't know. They haven't yet been taught all the techniques to correctly handle the situation. They'll repeat this run later after they've learned them. Oh, Jack, go. Only about a third of the seven week course is devoted exclusively to martial arts techniques. Every day poses both physical go, go. and mental challenges. Moving on, responsible use of force. This class is on the continuum of force, a discussion of evaluating the appropriate level of force to use in a situation. The Commandant had a vision to have three disciplines in the program. The first one was a physical discipline, the second one is a mental discipline, and the third one is a character discipline. And obviously the physical discipline being the techniques themselves. Uh, the mental discipline going beyond um, just the technique, but how to utilize the technique, and then our character discipline. You know, when do we utilize these techniques and how they relate to respect for human dignity as well. We all understand that, right? right. They're equal to us. We got that, right? <coughs> the things that I would use on a daily basis would be, probably be the continuum of force. Uh, we, don't, we never want to uh, apply the techniques that we, that we use. It's, we're, we're, uh, using we're always trying to de-escalate the situation. There's rules of engagement. All right. It's all about the leadership. When I came here, I was expecting it was just going to be straight fighting, you know, day in and day out. And uh, got here and realized, you, you know, it's more about developing the whole Marine. What they're trying to instill in us is how to become leaders, because when we go out there, we will be emulated upon our, you know, by our Marines, you know, because they're going to want to be like us. Let's go, fellas. Good job. The Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, or MICMAP, uses a belt system like most martial arts. Students have to be at least a green belt, the middle rating, to get into the course. By the time they graduate, they'll become black belts and qualify to train more instructors. They have to demonstrate proficiency in 181 moves to earn that black belt. Like the Army, the Marines incorporate elements of multiple disciplines into their program. There's Taekwondo, there's boxing, there's wrestling, the Ishinru, Muay Thai. This is a brown belt level exercise in knife techniques. The course also has an exchange program with several countries. Two British Marine commandos in this class were sent over here to see how the Americans do it. We don't break it down. We don't break the techniques down as far as these guys break it down. I mean, it's challenging, the physical side of it is certainly challenging, but um, our background, you know, we're used to being um, pushed hard, so that's not really like a, doesn't really trouble me as much. Um, it's just, the challenging thing for me over here is just trying to learn like, 181 map techniques in seven weeks. All right, let's go, get in. Let's go. The training schedule simply calls this squad combat cohesion exercise. To keep it a mystery for students yet to come, we weren't allowed in. Sounds intense. Across the hall, right, maybe I don't destroy him. a student teaching session. Course instructors evaluate each student's performance. Pretty much common sense. So remember to apply the continuum of force. Again. One of the primary focuses here is you can take anybody and make them hard and make them a good fighter, but if they can't teach anybody, then they're they're almost worthless. So not only did they teach leadership and fighting skills and unarmed combat skills here, they also teach how to instruct. The students were given assignments the night before to reprise one of the classes in the curriculum, with each responsible for a different subject. So the force goes from uh, level one all the way to level five. Uh, Sergeant Phillips, what's level five? So it was a little off the hip, but I think I did all right. I just have a few things I need to work on. I need to work on my gain attention and uh, 
transitions of going between topics. Like I kind of just jump to the next one. During a break, students plan strategy for the mysterious combat cohesion exercise. For future students, we didn't get to see what happened, but we did get some assurance you can do it. Just, just, start, just, start, just start chanting, just start chanting, sing, whatever you need to do. A lot of people like big it up, try and make it out and make, make it mysterious and, and there's like some kind of like um, you know, impossible test. Pretty much teaches you to work together as a team and uh, also to be able to fight when you're tired and when, it, when it's tough. Students get a chance to use the techniques they've learned in a standing to ground sparring session. Because Marines love to be physical, they love to go out there and roll around and do these techniques. It starts with intra squad sparring, student against student. The object is to take the opponent down and gain a dominant position, and to get back up if taken down. Marines are matched against opponents of about the same physical size when it's possible. They're supposed to go at half speed. If it looks hard, it's only for a split second, then it goes back to soft. And then some people's 50% is different than other people's. <laughs> some people's 50% can be pretty intense. Staff Sergeant Adrius Brown is pretty intense himself as he monitors his students. To be honest with you, every day is pretty intense. Obviously, if I'm not intense, they're not going to be intense. They only act the way that we do. If we come out there and we're timid and shy, they're going to do the same exact thing. Timid and shy is not much in evidence in this gym. Sometimes the students spar with instructors. We'll get in with the students and we'll try and you know, you know, work the techniques, let them work on us, and hopefully try and push them a little bit. You know, if we see where their level's at, you know, we'll take it down to their level. Uh, if it's a little better, we'll take it up a little bit. Student level, I would say that was about a you know, six or seven. Um, I try and keep it about a five, you know, right at right below or right at their students level. I'm trying to push it too much. Even so, the match has to end after a bloody nose. The session progresses to squad against squad matches. The intensity ratchets up a bit. There's always a Marine trying to be better than a Marine, and always a Marine that knows more and wants to learn more. You know, it makes it a lot more competitive here. All members of a losing squad have to do 10 burpees, push-ups combined with a vertical jump. I'm gonna put both my feet on the deck. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna drive back, drive back, create that space, correct? Right. Now you guys start to hear about that. Put All sessions end with some kind of tie-in. It can be a historical lesson or behavior advice or a discussion of what's just gone on. The junior leaders of the Marine Corps are being brought along, ready to step up and basically attain more responsibility. So that's, that's what they're learning, so that's what we're here for. It's a great course, you know, it's not all about, you know, what you see here, the fighting, it's more of a leadership school. So, you know, it really teaches Marines how to become better leaders in combat uh, all around, whether it be Marine or civilian, and it just makes them better all, you know, all around. The Martial Arts Center for Excellence is headquartered in a building called Raider Hall, named for the Marine Raiders of World War II, the first special operations unit in American military history. Talk about hand hand. Quite a few of them. Two That's combat right there. The headquarters houses a small museum with memorabilia from the Raiders' legendary battle record in the South Pacific. The Marine Corps treasures its history and traditions, including modern hand-to-hand -hand fighting traced back to the trench fighting of World War I. Go to uh, World War I, and you remember the famous uh, battles of Bella Woods. Again, it was a long rifle and the bayonet, another martial arts skill. But we didn't really call it martial arts, but it is a martial art. Bayonets were again the basis for most hand-to-hand -hand training in World War II. But the Marine Raiders introduced a new wrinkle, martial arts and the use of improvised weapons. Young Marines being introduced to the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program today are taught many of the same techniques employed by the Raiders. The MCMAP system was ordered up by General James Jones when he was Commandant in 1999, inspired by the fearsome reputation of Republic of Korea Marines in Vietnam. They were reputed to all be black belts in Taekwondo, and they wore a distinctive uniform. 
So he remembered that and said, by golly, we're all different, so we're going to wear a different uniform. And then also, because of his experiences, he wanted folks to know that if you tangle with the Marine, they're all going to be martial artists also. From the beginning, the program emphasized the physical, mental, and character disciplines. And the director likes to talk about it as a three-legged stool, and that stool's not going to stand if one of those legs is missing. So the mental and the character disciplines are just as important to this program as the physical disciplines. And it taught me, it gave me the confidence to know that I can get, you know, a pretty good butt kicking and still get back up and keep going. Lieutenant Colonel Joe Shusko knows the teaching is paying off in the war zones. There's not very many months that go by that we don't get an email or something from a commander that says, you know, the character of our young Marines on, on making a decision in regards to killing or not killing or making a decision on a split notice is basically a, a wonderful thing to see and they're equating that to what they're being taught with our core values in the, in the character discipline of our program. We're trying to uh, keep instilling honor, courage, commitment in some ways, make them better warriors, uh, but smarter warriors, not just, you know. I mean, obviously, I'm not that big, but I like to think of myself as somewhat an intelligent warrior. If you have a PFC coming to the Marine Corps and he spends four years in the MCMAP system, hopefully we can return a better human being to the civilian world than when we got him. 198,000 of 200,000 Marines in the Corps have received MCMAP training. Every infantry Marine is now required to become a green belt. Everyone else is required to be at least a gray belt, the second level in the MCMAP system. And it's for the entire Marine Corps. It doesn't matter if you're an aviator or you're a female or male. Or it doesn't really matter what your, what your job is. Everyone will do it. The Marines used a top-down approach to create the MCMAP program. In the Army, it was bottom up. You know, especially on a battlefield, most fights end up being grappling. Whether that be standing or ground, is inconsequential. Matt Larson became director of the Army Combatives Program after he retired from active duty. But in 1995, he was a Ranger squad leader ordered to reinvigorate the hand-to-hand -hand training program. The Combatives Manual hadn't changed much since World War II, so he set out to create something new. He'd become a martial arts aficionado while stationed in Tokyo and began merging techniques from different disciplines and designing a training regimen that was easy to integrate into daily military activities. I had tried to train my squads. You know, I was a squad leader for many years. I tried to train them in some of the other methods, you know, striking skills, etc. But once I started teaching them from the ground up, grappling base first, I knew immediately that it was going to grow. So every time you're letting your hands down like that, you're giving them an angle. So bring your hands back up to the center. Oh, that's good. We teach grappling first, not because most fights go to the ground or because that's a tactic we advocate or anything else. We teach grappling first because it's the easiest to learn and, and also sets the, the groundwork to learn all the rest of fighting. Larson's teaching approach spread from squad to company to battalion. As those who had learned it moved from other assignments, they took this version of combatives with them. And since his training program caught on so well, Matt was asked to rewrite the Army's combatives manual. The last manual came out in 2002, and that's when it became doctrine. He also began to develop train the trainer programs. While many different techniques are taught, the core of the program is a simple, common sense approach. Use what works. Take a typical fight. If that guy's trying to pummel me with his fist, if I tackle him, well, then his plan's over. If I fight for a dominant position, which is one of the first things we teach, and it's not really dependent upon knowing techniques or remembering anything other than just this strategy, you're already a better fighter after the first two hours of training because you have a better plan. And that is a mindset students learn to take with them. While combatives has its deadly serious side, it also has its sporting side. Tournaments have grown steadily. In 2008, the All-Army Championships at Fort Benning had 59 teams and 350 fighters. How do you provide purpose, direction, and motivation to get people training? And the best tool we have for that is competitions. It's a big pride thing. You know, a lot of Sergeant Majors come out and they'll back their guys and stuff like that. And it gives you a, a, a sense of, uh, I guess, accomplishment. You know, you know, you went out there and you did well in front of all your co-workers and stuff like that. So it's exciting. Sergeant Samuel Vanderslice, who would break his foot in two places in the Level 3 course, was proudly in Fort Bragg's corner. Sergeant Chris Gordon took third for the 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team out of Italy and went on to become an instructor at the Combative School. And Sergeant Todd Rader was pleased with the whole tournament process, 
starting at the battalion level. And it culminates at the championships where they actually get to be a part of something, be a part of a team, and to show somebody that, hey, I can represent my unit, represent my post, and be proud of it.